Good day again, my dear students. So again, this is your uh, this is your Sir Jeeves. So this is the sixth uh, chapter of our lecture. Uh, it's about the um, beginning of taxation in the Philippines. Okay. So I want to share with you uh, my PowerPoint presentation. So I want you to take down notes. Listen and listen. Uh, okay. Again, I want you to take to listen carefully and please take down notes so that um, you have uh, data of our le lecture for the, uh, for this chapter. So I want to share. Okay. You share. Share. Okay, share this one. Okay. Okay, so chapter six, Philippine chapter six, the beginning of taxation in the Philippines. Okay, so ancient Filipinos have already started in the paying taxes. So the purpose of um, the purpose of paying taxes was the protection from their datus. So the collected uh, taxes were called buwis, okay? Uh, except for the shifting household, everyone in the community was required to um, pay their taxes, non-payment of which was already punishable by those periods. So the arrival of the Spaniards uh, introduced the modern concept of taxation, okay? Um, uh, what else? The native Filipinas age, uh, aged uh, 16 to 60, were compelled to pay tribute or tributo to the king of Spain through uh, the colonial government, so amounting to uh, 8 reales or 1 peso per year. So every form of uh, payment uh, came in like so we have other form of payment no uh, came um, payment came in like gold copper textile rice uh, livestock and parsley bowl called polo e service okay but in 1884 so the but in 1884 um, the tribute was abolished and replaced by the cedula it is a certificate identifying the taxpayer, okay? So the tribute was personal. So the tribute was a personal tax of the na of the nature of a uniform poll tax and was the only uh, tax uh, universally enforced. And it was a... Uh, Live, uh, levied uh, on natives, uh, including mestizos, um, Spaniards resident in the island were exempt. So the rate known as one tribute was originally eight silver reales for each family, but this was early raised to ten reales uh, puertes on their equivalent. So twenty five reales de bellion equal to one fourth pesos or peso and subsequently to 12 reales fuertes or one peso one and one half peso or 1.5 pesos okay so according to plan in 1901 the, under the tribute was as explained above the firstborn son of the cabezas de barangay or former datus or persons adopted as such were exempt in paying the said tribute. So how about the tribute from the natives? So on the laws of Indies, several uh, times promulgated the um, deity and dating originally from 1523, nearly 50 years before the conquest Manila. Okay, so the the collection of the tribute was begun in the Philippines immediately after the uh, conquest by Miguel, Miguel Lopez de Legazpi and was continued until 1884. So a period of, of over 300 years, okay, with but little change in form on the 
in the methods of administration with no change in principle. So the original basis, um, the original basis of the revenue system was to was the responsibility of the native chieftains, the cabezas de barangay for the taxes imposed against the Philippine people of their districts. So although Spain provided the most um, elaborate means for determining how much uh, she would force the cabeza to pay into the treasury, uh, yet as a sort of uh, implied recognition of his original rights and natural authority, she never requires required or she never inquired too closely into how much more any cabeza might uh, collect for him. So the early Spanish laws uh, clearly recognize certain revenues um, as belonging to him. So by virtue of his position and of the authority uh, which he received, from his clan and simply required that he persuade his people um, to render additional tribute to the crown of Spain. So whose uh, vassal boat he and they had become. So even in the more recent laws, no acceptable provision is made for the reward of his services. So of course, which can be justified only on the supposition that he could still uh, claim revenues uh, from the people um, by virtue of his uh, position as a natural leader. Okay? So, nagduling ako. Um, what those, uh, that those um, next in authority over the cabeza should emphasize a claim to a personal share in this uh, unlegalized but customary um, payments of his office. Seems so natural that the government in this, in some instances, uh, recognized the practice and went for so far as to fix the rates or percentages of the taxes collected which should go to the uh, petty governors, to the uh, alcaldes, and even the uh, to the administrators or the treasury or uh, shenda. Okay, so so who are the collectors of tribute during the Spanish time? So uh, the cabeza de barangay were. Uh, we have the Cabeza de Barangay where the uh, main the actual collectors of the tribute for the 40 to 50 families under their charge and the local officials. We have the Alcalde Mayor or the in Alcaldes for provinces. So we have the Mayors for Corregidores or the Petty Governors. We have Alcalde Ayuntamiento, in Ayuntamiento, Gobernador Silvio, commonly known as captains for the municipality. So they were uh, held um, responsible for its collections, for being remitted through, um, through uh, their hands to the treasury uh, in Manila where the Governor General resides. Okay. So, um, what is cedula or uh, cedula persona? So, in 1884, uh, the time honored GBU, the original mainstay of the entire system of the government and of the revenue in the Philippines, and the original basis of Spain's commerce with her dependencies was re uh, repealed. And we did uh, pass away the uh, title, the Caja de Comunidad and the uh, Santo Room. So the place of the ancient uh, tribute uh, which had been rendered for so many years with so little murmuring and was taken by a graduated poll tax 
uh, modeled upon that of the peninsula. So, uh, and needless to say, the innovation was not popular. So, the tax was collected by means of a certificate of identification known as a cedula persona, which every resident of the island, Spaniards and foreigners, as well as the natives with this, without distinction of race, okay, nationality or sex, over 18 years of age was required to obtain. The only ex ex exceptions, these uh, exceptions were the Chinese who paid another poll tax, okay? The uh, remondatos de infieles, uh, not subject to the local administration and the natives uh, and colonists of the archipelago of Holo and of the islands of Malabac and Palawan. So, why they need to have a cedula? Okay. Cedula had to be... Um, um, exhibited in the following reasons. Number one, upon taking up um, upon taking up any commission or entering uh, up, uh, entering upon any public employment under the royal or insular authority. We have upon entering in any provincial or municipal uh, office. So, in making any contract, public or private, upon uh, representing presenting claims uh, so uh, soliciting business or appearing for any purpose before the petty governors or ministers of justice in the pueblos so uh, upon bringing any action before any court of any authority or before any officer so upon matriculation in any institution of learning upon entering in any development, uh, any employment in industry or commerce, any profession, art, or trade, upon payment of direct taxes, upon presenting any claim or exercising any civil right, not previously mentioned, and acquiring any rights, okay, or contracting any obligation upon establishing identity um, upon realizing any kind of uh, upon realizing any kind of claim uh -huh. uh, uh, ano yun? upon realizing any kind of um, credits making or um, Withdrawing deposits, uh, collecting on letters of credit, making bills of exchange, depositing money in savings banks, uh, confirming pledges uh, with the um, Montes de Piedad or pawn shops, um, and upon bidding at public auction. So up also they need to have a cedula upon becoming a director administrator, member, voters, stakeholder, or employee um, of any class of association or industrial undertaking. So upon traveling beyond the boundaries of Pueblo of residence and also upon entering into domestic service. So why taxation is important? So, excuse me. So why taxation is important? Okay, but before that, no? So, um, the officers of the government were authorized to call for the examine of the cedulas upon any all, any or and all occasions, and any pound without a cedula uh, was subject to very severe penalties. The cedulas were issued to the basis of padron prepared by the cabeza de barangay and drawn up in practically the same manner as the padron. Uh, for the tribute. So the required uh, information being collected on schedules, okay, filled out by the heads of the household, giving the name of the income of every person over 18 years old of age in the household. So the part drawn uh, was made in a uh, triplicate, one copy for the cabeza, one for the gubernatorial, and one for the treasury department. So again, let's go back. Uh, 
uh, to why taxation is very important. So, same principle as before, um, the collection of uh, money through taxation is used by the state through the government in their functional similarity throughout history to carry out many functions like expenditures on war, okay, what else? Um, the enforcement of law, public order, protection of property, economic infrastructure, public work, social engineering, um, subsidies, and the uh, operation of the government itself. So the government, um, the government also uses taxes to fund warfare and public services. So these services include educational system. A healthcare system and pensions for the elderly, benefits for the unemployed person with disability and public transportation. So the energy, water, and waste management system also common public utilities, and these are where our taxes go. So even before and today, tax is the lifeblood of the gober. Man, okay, that is uh, uh, the reason why uh, taxes is very important to us. So, again, okay, um, everything that you see in uh, public places, specifically in public places, you know, the roads, uh, the bridges, okay, the schools, the pre education you have. Right now is the product of the different taxes collected by the government, no? So our family and even in different goods or um, what do you call this um, products? Na binibili natin lahat po yon may tax. So sa naingat lang natin yung mga gamit na ng ng pamahalaan. Dahil sa totoo lang po, no, malaking pera ang ginasas dyan para lang maibigay sa in ating lahat at makapagbigay serbisyo sa ating lahat. Okay. This topic, uh, we will discuss about... Uh, um, it's about the uh, result of collecting taxes or tribute, tapolo i serbisyo, or dapat bibigay yung pang convert ng Pilipin ng Pilipinas into Christianity, no? Actually, uh, there is uh, another topic that I want to share with you, okay, today. So, um, I will uh, open first the, uh, okay. What are the result of um, again? What is the result of what you call this? Um, what is the result of uh, collecting taxes, polo, the polo is servicio, or different economic policies in the Filipinos during the Spanish colonization? So, um, here are some of the uh, effects or the result no no mga yon so these are the different revolts or um revolts happened in the philippines so i want to share with you this slide so uh i want you first i want you to, uh first i want you to um to okay so uh this is the content we okay um this is the continuation actually this is the extra lecture uh uh, this chapter, no, after that taxes, no, taxation, the Philippines during the Spanish era. So the result of of different uh different economic policies introduced by Spanish Spaniards during the colonization here in the Philippines, uh, is the Philipp different uh Filipino revolution or revolts happened in the Philippines. Okay, so I want to share with you guys first the uh 
this um, PowerPoint presentation. Okay, the Philippine. I want you to read first one by one. Okay, please read first one by one. Of course, um, we have name of revolts. No, as you can see, observe and see. Um, we have two for six columns. We have the name of revolt, the date, the place. What are the cause or causes? Who is the leader? And what is the result? So I want you to read it one by one. Okay? So Lakandula, 1574, Tondo, Nabotas. So the cause is failure of Governor Labisares to fulfill the Gaspi's promise to Lakandula. Lakandula, the leader is Lakandula. Of course, fail. Pampanga. Revolt, 1585, in Pampanga, abuses of Spanish Comenderos is the cause, no? Um, of course, spilled pa rin. Tondo, in 1587 to 88. Uh, Tondo, uh, Cuyo, um, Calamianes. So, what's the cause of this uh, revolt? Desire of independence. Who are the leaders? Magit Salamat, Martin Panagan, Juan Banal, Pedro Balingit. And of course, it's also failed. Plot discovered early. Leaders were executed. So, Cagayan Ilocos, 1589. Cagayan Ilocos Norte. And Ilocos Norte, refusal to pay tribute tyranny of tribute collectors. Of course, failed then. We have the Magat Revolt in 1596 in Cagayan. No, the cause is abuses of tribute collectors. Of course, the, leader is named, the name of the leader is Malag Magalat. Pilled and hide because they hired the assassin to kill the leader. Okay. Um, Igorot uh, revolt in 1601 in northern Luzon. The desire for religious toleration and failed. Uh, Irayas, 1521. Um, Cagayan Valley, uh, oppression of Spanish officials is the cause. Uh, Pilipi Katabay and Gabriel Dayag were the leaders. No? They stopped due to the Father Santos Thomas preaching. Okay. Tamblot in Bohol. So, Tamblot uh, revolt, uh, the cause is the desire to abandon Christianity and return to the old religious faith. The name of the leader is Bailan Tablot, or Bailan Tablot actually. Um, uh, what he was, the result, he was suppressed by the Spaniards and the Christian Cebuanos. So we have Bangkok Revolt in 1621 in Leyte. Okay, the desire for religious toleration, ang kanilang cause, and the leader is Bangkau Pagali. And they were failed also. Nagkaroon ulit tayo ng Cagayan Revolt in 15, 16, 25, 27, and 1639. Their cause is the desire for independence, um, punishment of a woman who really displeased certain uh, Spanish officials. So we have Miguel Lanab Aldaban is the leader. So, failed or so the result is failed. So, leaders pardoned later killed uh, when they uh, reboiled anew. Uh, we have Caraga Revolt, um, 1629 to 32, 1631. In Caraga, Northern Mindanao, the cause is dissatisfaction of townspeople with Spanish rule. Also, the result is failed. We have again Re Cagayan Revolt in 1639. In Cagayan, dissatisfaction with Spanish rule. Of course, Pilt Olet, Ladla Revolt in 1643 in Malolos, Bulacan, Southern Luzon, awareness from Spanish of uh, rule. Uh, the leader is Pedro Ladla, Pilt also. The result is also Pilt. Um, we have Visayan Revolt in Eastern and Visayas, Northern Mindanao, and Sambuanga, cause Ba, the cause is caused by uh, Governor Pajardo order to send Bisan laborers to Gabite for shipbuilding. No, that is the reason why um uh yung mga apelido natin. Sabi natin, hindi naman talaga sila talaga purong taga Cavite eh. They are from Visayas. Kaya kung mapapasin nyo, marami tagang Visayan na, na nasa Cavite ngayon. Pero ang origin nila, origin nila is in, in Visaya. One of the reasons is because of this um uh, Polo is servicio actually. So may kwento dun eh. Uh, kaya kung mapapasin nyo, ba't yung apelido nyo halo-halo or sa iba-ibang lugar may pakasin po pra, uh, apelido pero hindi na natin matrace kung bakit sila magkaroon ng same apelido. 
maybe because this is the result of the different polar servicio in uh, na binigay ng mga ng mga Espanyol sa ating mga ninuno. Kaya sila napunta sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Pilipinas. Okay. So, okay. The leader of this Abyssin Revolt is Juan Ponce Sumuroy and Padro Kamaug. Okay. Pampanga Revolt in Bacolor Pampanga. The failure of officials to pay for rice uh, purchase repeated requirements for personal services. So, the leader is Francisco Maniago. So, ano yan? Failed lahat yan. Okay, Pangasinan, Ilocos, and Panay. No, please take down notes all this. Okay, I want you to read all this uh, data first. Then let's proceed mamaya sa analysis natin. Okay, we have Tamblot again. We have Tamblot, Bangkaw, and Cagayan. We have Caraga in Northern Summer. Okay, we have Dagohoy. Okay, Agrarian, Silang Revolt, Palaris, the Basi Revolt, and Hermano Puli Revolt. Okay, so sabi dyan no, ang haba-haba kasi nito, kaya ayoko basahin, ayoko na ipakita sa inyo yun eh. Okay, I will give you some important details na lang with regards to different revolts. Number one is about Hermano Puli. Actually, Hermano Puli, um, Uh, being a niti, Pule was denied admission as a monk. So he founded a religious brotherhood, what we called uh, Compradia de San Jose, which the government outlawed and ordered to dissolve. So uh, that's the reason behind uh, Apolinario de la Cruz Armano Pule revolted against the revolts against the Spanish regime. So how about Basi, uh, Basi revolt? Actually, um, the Basi uh, revolt happened in the Philippines. Uh, in Ilocos, no, because the the Spaniards um uh, try to monopolize the uh, making of Basi wine. So Basi Basi or Basi wine is a uh, uh, ho homemade wine in Ilocos, wherein um they use this Basi actually araw-araw nila ginagina ano to uh, iniinom. They say pampatulog after nila magtrabaho or pampalipas oras. Okay? At ito dahil nga homey wine siya, madali lang para sa sa mga taga Ilo, sa mga Ilocano na gumawa nito. So th there is a time kasi that this Basi ay natikman ng mga Espanyol and nakarating ito ang, ang lasa nito ay naka, nakilala rin sa maging sa Europa. So dahil nga tumataas ang value ng uh, yung yung uh, yung at, uh, dahil nga uh, masarap yung sinasa, yung basi wine na to okay dahil nga very uh, masarap to and sinasabi nila talaga mainit sa katawan since Europe every lalo na pag uh, month of bare months malamig na sa part sa nor sa northern Europe no sa sa Europe so they need a uh, an alcohol or a wine na pwede magpain sa kanilang natakawan. So, nakilala itong basi. So, dahil nga very cheap lang din yung cost ng um, paggawa nito, no? ang naisip ng Spanish government na imunopolyo ang paggawa ng basi para Spanish government lang ang magkikita uh, or kikita dun sa basi wine. So, they, they, they uh, disallowed the uh, native Ilocanos to meet to make uh, home wine, home basi, homemade basi wine no, sa kanilang mga bahay. So, that's the reason behind kung bakit nag-revolt itong mga Ilocano no, na tinawag nating basi revolt. Okay? Tandaan natin itong mga to, okay? Silang, of course. So, dalawa tong silang na nakikilala natin sa ating kasaysayan we have Jego Silang and um, Gabriela Silang Jego Silang is the leader actually of this revolt no so wherein uh, they want to expel ang kanilang pakay sa kanilang pagre-revolt or yung cause ng kanilang revolt is to the, the desire to expel the Spaniards from Ilocos so it's just so happened no Um, according to our history, uh, Diego Silang was killed by Miguel Bicos, no? wherein um, 
sinasabi ng marami kasi version sinasabi na ito si Miguel Bico no, talaga namang friend ito si Diego Silang pero nabayaran ng mga Espanyol para patayin si Diego Silang okay when uh, Diego Silang died no um Gabriela Silang o oh, Maria Jose Pagabriela Silang uh, continued the fight after he, her husband uh, death no siya yung nag-continue para uh, talunin o makipaglaban sa mga Espanyol. That is why uh, he became, she, Gabriela Silang is also known as the Joan of Arc of Ilocos or Ilocanja. So what else? We have the Goho. Yes, you know, do you know what? Um, the Goho Revolt is the longest revolt happened in the Philippines. Okay? This is the longest revolt happened in the Philippines. The reason is that the refusal lang naman ng um na ni Father Morales na bigyan ng Christian burial ang kanyang kapatid no tumanggi ang kato ang, ang si Father Morales bakit kasi sinasabi sa kasaysayan na itong kapatid ni Francisco de Gohoy ay namatay through um ano yun yung yung nagaano sila na yung magbabarim ha ano na itawa? may term kasi dun eh yung yung Duelo, yes. Yun. That's the right term. So, dahil nga namatay sa duelo ang kanyang kapatid ni Francisco de Gohoy, para sa mga katoliko, masama naman talaga yun. No? Ibig sabihin, namatay ka sa masamang pamamaraan. No? Parang hindi siya binigyan ng Christian burial. So, nagalit itong si Francisco de Gohoy. Okay? At nag nga sa Pilipinas. At siya ang tinaguri ang the longest revolt happened in the Philippines. Okay, so Siladla, okay, Karaga, okay. Let's analyze all the data. Okay, so as what do you observe in all the revolts that happened in the Philippines? Just make it the, to make the uh, story short. Okay, let's have the analysis. Na again, what do you observe in the data that I presented? Number one, very good guys. So number one, they are all failed. No. What do you think is the reason why they are all failed? Okay, yes, we have number one. They have different what? Agenda. Or the causes of their revolt. No? What are, by the way, what are the causes of their revolt? No? Marami tayong mapapansin dyan ng different causes ng revolt sila. Number one is about the encumenda system. Okay? Yung tungkol sa lupa. We have the what we call what? Yes, very good. We have the abuses of tribute or no, sa pagbabayad sa tribute or taxes. What else? Of course, yung pag-abuse ng Spaniard sa mga Pilipino. Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Okay, it's about also religion. Okay, we have like katulad nitong kay ano Hermano Pule no kay then yung isa pa yung pinakaimportante na pansin natin yung isang uh, agenda yung tinatawag nating self what self agenda okay when we say self agenda okay um it's a you have your own agenda You have personal, that's the right term, okay? Personal agenda in making a revolt or conducting a revolt against the Spaniard. Ano yung isang example doon sa 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 personal agenda na yun? Is the Dagohoy Revolt. Dahil nga hindi lang binigyan ng Cristiano Libin yung kapatid niya, nag-revolt siya against Spain, okay? So, those economic policies, those are religion, personal agenda, or... Uh, Abuses of to pay taxes. Yes, polo is service also is part of the cause of revolts. No, eto mga to sinasabi natin no na na iba iba ang dahilan ng mga revolutionary ng Pilipinas nagrebolt sa Spanish go go government during the early time. No, kaya lahat sinasabi natin kaya mapapansin natin na possible na pil talaga ang isang bagay kapag walang isang ah isang goal. Okay? So, um, what else? Ano pa yung masasabi natin? Of course, syempre, mapapasin natin. 
hindi sabay-sabay lahat ng nagre-revolusyon. So, may nag revolution sa Northern Luzon, sa Mindanao, meron dito sa Visayas, no? pero hiwa-hiwalay sila. So, what are the different uh, problem kaya nakikita natin? Of course, number one, makikita natin dyan is lack of communication. Okay, of course, may kinalaman na naman dyan ng ating geography. Since the early time, no, ang mga barko, hindi pa naman di motor talaga, di sagwan lang. It's very hard for the Filipinos to move from one place to another in terms of communication we have different languages again no it's very hard for uh, it's very hard for the filipinos no from luzon to besides to mindanao to communicate to one another because of the language barrier okay these are some of the insight that i want to give you in this extra uh, lecture na to okay so next video i will discuss to you the what we call uh nationalism so we will identify in the next lecture what is nationalism and patriotism so again do, this is your sir james do not forget to subscribe to my channel hangyo nerong solong gala goodbye guys